been great. Good to be back with you all. Got a few announcements to share with you. <clears throat> Bible study will be will resume again tonight as we study the book of James. Session meets on Tuesday. James study on Thursday plus praise team at 6.30. Uh, again, uh, Saturday, um, all you can eat breakfast at the fire hall. Uh, women of the church will be on the 23rd. And our men's breakfast is on the 27th. And we do want you to RSVP by the 23rd. So just let me know. Are there any other announcements? November 4th is Happy Day for uh, the Box, FL Shoebox. Okay. Um, yeah, we're at Grendel's. Right, at 12 right. o'clock is pizza, and at 1 o'clock is start packing. Okay. Are you taking donations here? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we can bring donations in for that time. Right. Take donations anytime, right? That's right. Right. Are there any other announcements? <clears throat> they greet one another with the love of the Lord. Did you hear that? When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply call. To bring something that's a word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my Thank you. 
place of praise this morning. That we can sense your presence. That your Holy Spirit's with us. We just ask, O Holy Spirit, that you'll have your way with us this morning. As we lift up the praise to our Father and glorify the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you for your presence and we just ask that our praise would be worthy. Father, we just give you thanks for the honor just to be here. We just thank you for the privilege of lifting up the name of Jesus. Because it's at that name of Jesus that every knee will bow and tongue will confess that he is Lord. We welcome your Lordship here this morning, Father. And it's all because of Jesus. I
Anybody else? Let's sing. Number 508. <laughs> Stand on that word. 
We don't know how you're going to do a lot of it, but we know that you're still in control and that Jesus' Lordship is indeed Lord of all. And so, Father, we just commit each one of these to you. Father, for, for the family that needs comforted today, especially, Father, those families who uh, don't know where their loved ones are because of the hurricane or because of the families that know their loved ones have died, that you would be their comforter, that you would help them, Father, recognize that Jesus is their Lord and Savior and they need Him before their time. Father, we just thank you for our military personnel and just ask that you would wrap your arms around them today. <coughs> protect them. Put that hedge of protection around them. Father, for any of them that don't know you, that today would be their day, that they would receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Father, we pray for this country, for our leaders. Father, our leaders need to have the wisdom that only you can provide, that wisdom that is truth, that wisdom that sets people free instead of puts them in bondage. Father, that wisdom that will overcome the hatred that we experience and see. Father, we just ask that you would give our leaders the realization that this country needs Jesus more than anything. And that they would turn their hearts over to him. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That Israel would come to realize that their peace only comes when they receive their Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we just give you thanks that we can lift off all these concerns and requests. And we thank you that not only do you hear, but you answer. And we just trust you. It's all because of what you've done for us in Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's receive our morning tithes and gifts.
he's not coming, is he? He's going to be shy this morning. Okay. I don't know whether, are, are, are you doing anything by way of sports, or are you doing things, what? Gymnastics. You're doing gymnastics, okay. You run. Are you, you're doing track, okay. Not doing soccer or anything like that, just track. Okay. Well, sometimes, sometimes I know when I was when I was playing, my coach would always tell me, "Leave it all on the field," which means when you come back after the game is over, don't regret that you didn't give it your all. And that's what we're talking about this morning when in the sermon. All in. Give it your all. All for Jesus. When we're playing sports, no matter what it is, or gymnastics, you want to do your best, right? If you want to do your best, run your hardest, jump and twirl and do whatever you're doing. Okay? The best you can. But the best you can, right? And that's what God wants us to do for Him. Be all in for Him. No matter what we're doing, that we remember of what Jesus has done for us so that we can give it all for Him. Whether we're in sports, or whether we're in school studying, or whether we're doing something somewhere else to help somebody, do it with all that we have. And if we do, when it comes time for us to meet Jesus, when He comes back, God takes us home, whichever comes first, He will be able to look at us and say, well done. You gave it your best. You did it for Jesus. So I just want to encourage you, I challenge you today, to do everything that you do for Jesus, for His glory. Pray with me. Father, we give you thanks and praise this morning that we can give it all for you because you gave it all for us. We give you thanks for Jesus. M number three six three fifty nine.
study in First Philippians, or in Philippians chapter one. Next week we will finish chapter one. But before we get there, we've got a lot of room to cover. The title of the sermon is All for the Cause of Christ. We're all in for Jesus. All for the cause of Christ. When we look at the text, and you can follow along on the back of the bullets if you wish. All of Paul's life was evidence of the fact that he gave it all. Philippians chapter 1 verse 12, Paul writing to the Philippians writes these words, But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. The things that have happened to me have increased the opportunity for the gospel to be shared, shared and spread. What an attitude. Think about it for a moment. Think about what Paul had gone through. He'd been shipwrecked, been stoned several times, ostracized from the Jewish community. Every time he showed his face, there was a riot. He had been driven out of town, forced to leave everything behind. And now he's in chains. And he says, all for the furtherance of the gospel. Too often when we go through struggles, when we go through difficulties, when we face problems that seem to be insurmountable, the only thing that comes to our mind is how can I get through it? But Paul was different. His attitude was different. And remember, Paul was just a human being. But his attitude was how can Jesus be lifted up? How can the gospel be declared? How can the furtherance of the gospel be spread? Because of what I'm enduring. Because of what I'm going through. That's quite an attitude. That's quite a life. Paul recognized and realized that even his own life only what it was because of Jesus. I mean, let's face it, he was a murderer, an imprisoner of the, of the Christian church. And yet, God, by His grace, reached down and gave him another chance. Paul recognized something that so many in the life of the church so quickly forget. If it wasn't for Jesus, where would we be? If it wasn't for Jesus, where would we be going? Hello? The reality is, is Paul accepts that whatever he went through, it was for the gospel. He was all in for Jesus. Recognizing that he had a lot of things that he could brag about. Even when he bragged about them, he said it was the, those things that he could brag about were nothing compared to what Jesus had done for him. That the things which happened to me have turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. What an attitude! What a guy! What is Jesus? And he goes on to say, even in his chains, he says, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. That my chains are in Christ. He looked at his chains 
and recognize that, that, that Christ could use them. They are in Christ. It's not that Christ caused them. And a lot of people would have blamed the Romans. But Paul gives glory to Jesus. He says, these chains that I carry are so that the whole palace guard comes to know who Jesus is. Can you imagine being appointed a guard over Paul? Every four hours a new set of guards would come. Every four hours a new gospel would be declared. Every four hours a new captive audience was there and they couldn't do anything but listen to Paul tell about Jesus. My chains, my circumstance, no matter what it is, it's in Christ. Maybe that's why Paul could say, as we'll see later on, for me to live is Christ. For me to live is Christ. No matter what he was facing, no matter what his difficulty, it was for Jesus. And all the palace guard, all of them found out and knew that this Paul was all in for Jesus. That he knew, that he knew, that he knew. And no one was exempt from knowing. What a powerful testimony. A powerful reality. No matter what we go through, we can do it for Jesus. No matter what we're experiencing, we can do it for Jesus. No matter what our frustration or hurt, we can do it for Jesus. All in for Him. Paul goes on to say, and, and, and most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. All of the palace guard, and now the church that's in, that's in Rome, all of them have been encouraged by what Paul was going through and the testimony of Paul as he witnessed to all the palace guard. They became very brave and very bold. If Paul can do it, so can we. If Paul can go through it, so can we. If, we. if he can lift up Jesus in his circumstance, so can we. And they did. And the church of Rome became eventually the very center of Eastern Christianity. Not because they hadn't suffered. Not because they hadn't been tied between two chariots going in different directions. Not because they'd been tied to the tails of two tigers or two lions and let go. Not because they hadn't experienced the tragedies that we would look at and recognize them not so much as tragedies, but the opportunity to declare in life or death, Jesus is Lord. What confidence, what bravery they showed because of what Paul was going through. You see, every one of our lives and every one of our struggles either gives glory to God or glory to the devil. And it's all being whether we in attitude want to praise God regardless or we want to complain and complain and complain and give the devil his due. It's all our choice. It's all our attitude. But as for Paul, he was all in for Jesus. As for these Roman Christians, they were all in for Jesus. We in this country take it so comfortably, don't we? We're not persecuted because we came and come in the doors this morning. We're not persecuted if we say we're a Christian. Maybe if we say we're a follower of Jesus, but not to be a Christian, even though some quarters they might frown at us. But the reality is, is we've had it awfully good. 
And the reality is, is that there's a day coming. And will we be ready as Paul and the early Romans to be all in for Jesus regardless? But Paul goes on and says that not only were the chains that he experienced, but the jealousy of others. It's almost like pouring vinegar on a wound. It's adding insult to injury. Paul's difficulties and struggles, and then he has people preaching against him. He goes to say in verse 15, Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife. It's also some from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of the gospel. Some people criticized him. Some people ridiculed him. Some people made fun of him. But the gospel was still being preached in spite of it. Paul says, that stuff doesn't matter. What they say about me doesn't make any difference. I'm all in for Jesus. And as long as Jesus is lifted up, it doesn't make any difference what they say. <coughs> there are a lot of pat preachers today, even on television, who sometimes come against other pastors and preachers. And that's too bad. They didn't learn something from Paul. Our job isn't to come against people. Our job is to lift up Jesus. Our job is to make sure that above everything else, Jesus' name is honored and glorified. That we recognize that He is the only one that makes the difference anyway. It's not what people say. It's not what people do. It's what Jesus says and what Jesus has done. Hello? We need to understand, as Paul understood, that it doesn't make any difference whether people are criticizing or ridiculing us. What makes the difference is whether Jesus is being lifted up. Paul goes on. And he says, what's really, what really counts is the results. No matter what it is, what really counts is the results. And he says, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, number one, Christ is preached. And this I rejoice in. Yes, I will <coughs> rejoice. It doesn't make any difference what they say. As long as Jesus is lifted up. As long as Christ is elevated, as long as people are hearing that Jesus is Savior and Jesus is Lord. Number two, it says in verse 19, For I know this will turn out for my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and hope. He says, For I know it's all going to turn out for me. I'm not worried about it. You're praying for me. You're praying for me. You're believing for me. You're standing in the gap for me. And I know that I stand faithful. It's going to be my salvation. I'm not concerned about that. God is still in control. Jesus is still Lord. And I'm confident that with your prayers, I'm going to hang in there. Jesus is going to be lifted up. And my salvation is guaranteed. Folks, it's so important that we pray for one another. It's so important not that we criticize one another, but that we pray for one another, that the gospel will go forth, that the word of God will be declared, that Jesus' lordship will be evidenced in our lives for their lives. He goes on to say the next point, so that in nothing I will be ashamed. So that in nothing I will be ashamed. Paul writes in Romans chapter 1, 
I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it has the power of salvation to all those who believe, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. But I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of what Jesus did for me. I'm not ashamed of how He set me free. I'm not ashamed of the glory that is great for me. I'm not ashamed. And he says, in all of this, I will not be ashamed because Jesus, I'm all in for you. And then in another point he says, so that the results matter, so that with boldness as always and now so. That he would continue in boldness to declare, in boldness to share. Paul was only perhaps days or weeks away from his own persecution, from his own execution. And yet, in all of it, he says, I'm, I'm going to be bold in it all. What has resulted from the gospel coming to me is that I'm bold. I want to stay bold. And I want to stay confident. And I want to stay believing. And I want to stay all in for Jesus. And sixth, the sixth result. So that Christ will be magnified in my body whether I live or die. Whether by life or death. That Christ will be glorified in my body. That no matter what I go through, no matter what I experience, no matter what the pain, no matter what the struggle, no matter what the difficulty, that Christ will be glorified. I just want to lift up Jesus. I just want to make sure that the world around me knows that I'm all in for Jesus because He was all in for me. It's the results, He says. The results that Jesus be lifted up that others around me will know without a shadow of a doubt who is my owner? Who's my master? Who's my Lord? Who's my Savior? Who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? As we sang it, Jesus be Lord of all. May that be true of all of us. And one other thing that is not in your bulletin, I don't think. But one of the most powerful verses, and I've shared it so often that you all ought to be able to repeat it back to me. From Romans chapter 8, verse 28. As he says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord called according to His purpose. Paul in his confidence in Rome, I know all these things, all of them will work together for good. And if we have that kind of confidence as Paul did, then there's no reason why we shouldn't be all in for Jesus. And at every opportunity, share with those around us, Jesus has become my answer. And He can be yours too. If you'll let Him. All in for Jesus. Paul was, regardless of what he faced. Are you all in? Is Jesus the Lord of Lords and King of Kings? your life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for Paul's commitment. I thank you that he was all in for Jesus so that we could understand what it means to be all in for you. Thank you, Father, that you were all in for us. That's why you sent Jesus because you were all in for us. You were willing to give your very best so that we could have the best. You were willing to take us from our sin areas, regardless of what they were, 
and wash them in the blood of Jesus because you were all in for us. Help us, Lord, to respond like Paul with the same attitude, regardless of what I'm going through. Lord, I know that all things work for good as we love you and serve you. And I know that I can be all in for you because you were all in for me. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory today. And it's all because of Jesus and what He has done for us. And it's in His great and powerful name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let us sing our concluding hymn. I am thine, O Lord. May it be our prayer.